Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating a trigonometric expression, a numerical one. We have cosine pi over 5 minus cosine 2 pi over 5. And we're going to find the numerical value of this expression. And I'll be presenting three methods, and I'm pretty sure there's more than three ways you can do this problem. So if you know of any other methods, please let us know in the comment section down below. All right, let's get started. And the most common way to start is with the first method. Great, so I'm not a big fan of radians. I don't know if you are, but I usually convert radians to degrees, and I write the degree symbol only once or maybe twice, and then totally forget about it because from that point on, everything will be in degrees, unless otherwise stated. Okay, great. So pi over five, since pi radians is 180 degrees, pi over five is 36 degrees, and 2 pi over 5 is 72 degrees, which is twice that, right? So this is what we're trying to evaluate, more friendly, right? So to be able to evaluate this, again, from now on, I'm not going to write the degree symbol, so don't be mad if I don't write it, because I usually don't write it. So anyways, suppose we set x equal to 36. Great. And then from here, we get something, okay, 2x is 72, I know that, but let's get to something more fundamental which is a very special angle, 5x. So if x is 36, 5x will be 180 or 180 degrees, right? Great. Now I can break down 5x into 3x plus 2x, and you might be questioning why. You'll see in a little bit. Of course, getting 2x is important because 72 is 2x, but we can break it down that way. All right, so far so good. Now, I want to, Go ahead and isolate one of these. How about getting the 3x by itself, subtract 2x, and we get that. So we're going to work on this. Obviously, our goal is to sine both sides. And then we're going to get sine of 3x equals sine of 180 minus 2x. And we're going to use some identities. And the next thing we're going to do is because if you have two angles that are supplementary, in other words, their sum is 180 degrees or pi radians, then their signs are equal because the first and second quadrant, think about it. So sine of 180 minus 2x is the same as sine of 2x. Great. This is really good because this gives us sine of 3x equals sine of 2x. Again, I'm not used to writing parentheses around the argument, especially if it's kind of understood, right? There's no function that's written as sine 3. So hopefully that won't be confusing. Anyways, I made a video about this a while ago. I don't remember when it was, but probably maybe months ago. Who knows, maybe years ago. But you can go ahead and check it out, and I'll try to share the link down below. But in that video, I basically covered the product of these two numbers. And I don't even remember which methods I used, but go ahead and check it out. Anyways, so we now have sine 3x equals sine 2x. What does that mean? It means I can use formulas, right? There's a formula for sine of 3x. A lot of times people memorize it, but I don't. But you can look it up. It is 3 sine x minus 4 sine cubed x. Now, you might be questioning, like, okay, you don't memorize the formula. Because if you memorize, you'll forget. But if you learn, then you'll remember, right? How do I remember this? I just use sine of 2x plus x. Of course, I remember sine 2x because it's easy. Anyways, this is sine of 3x, and for sine of 2x, I can write 2 sine x cosine x, which is something that I memorized. Great. And again, that you can find it from sine x plus x. Cool. What can I do with this? Every term has sine in it. So let's go ahead and factor out a sine. And then we're going to get 3 minus 4 sine squared x. And this is 2 sine x times cosine x. Now we have to consider one thing here. What happens if sine x is equal to 0? In that case, this equation is satisfied. But remember, x is 36. And as we know, hopefully, sine of 36 degrees is not 0. So we can divide both sides by that with confidence. Great. This is really good because this gives us a quadratic equation. Isn't that awesome? So let's go ahead and put everything on the same side. We get 4 sine squared x plus 2 cosine x 
minus 3 equals 0. Uh-oh, this is not good because I have sine squared and cosine. But don't worry, we have the Pythagorean theorem. So we can replace sine squared with 1 minus cosine squared, right? The well-known identity, hopefully. If you distribute to 4, you're going to get 4 minus 4 cosine squared x plus 2 cosine x minus 3 equals 0. 4 minus 3 is going to give you 1, but this is negative. So I want to multiply both sides by negative 1. Consider it done. 4 cosine squared x. And then this will be a negative minus 2 cosine x. And then plus 1 is going to turn into a minus 1. Guess what? If you solve this equation, you're going to find cosine x. So set cosine x equal to c, which makes sense, right? Is that k? No, c for cosine. And then you're going to get 4c squared minus 2c, or not 2c, do you see what I see? Minus 1 equals 0. And if you solve this using the quadratic formula or otherwise, you're going to get negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, which is 20, divided by 2a, which is 8. If you simplify this, this is 2 root 5. You're going to get 1 plus minus root 5 over 4. Wait a minute. This gives us two c values, right? Again, 2c. 1 plus root 5 over 4 and 1 minus root 5 over 4. But get, guess what? 1 minus root 5 over 4 is negative. And cosine of 36 cannot be negative, right? It's in the first quadrant. So we're going to go with 1 plus root 5 over 4. So in other words, cosine x, which is c, is 1 plus root 5 over 4. Or I could probably write it as root 5 plus 1 over 4, right? That looks a little better for some reason. Now, my next thing is going to be wait, what is x? x is 36, remember? So this will be cosine of 36 degrees, again, without the degree symbol, but it's degrees, is that. And now I'm going to use the double angle formula. Remember the double angle formula for cosine? Cosine of 2 theta is 2 cosine squared theta minus 4. Of course, there's three of them, but this is the one I need. So from here, cosine of 72 degrees is just going to be 2 times cosine of 36 squared and then minus 1. And if you do the math, I mean, I did it for you. You don't have to worry about it. You're going to get root 5 minus 1 over 4. Uh-oh. That's interesting. Cosine 36 and cosine 72 are conjugates. So, cosine 36 minus cosine 72 is then root 5 plus 1 over 4 minus root 5 minus 1 over 4 Root 5 cancels out, 1 minus minus 1 is 1 plus 1, 2 divided by 4 is 1 half. And that just brings us to the end of the first method, and we got two more methods to go. But I'm not trying to rush because a lot of times I try to finish this thing in like 7, 8 minutes, whatever, and then I just end up rushing. So I'll try to take my time. I hope you don't mind. Make sure to watch the video till the very end, okay? Great, so here's the second method. We're going to go ahead and set something interesting here. First of all, we're going to get set z to the fifth equal to 1. Now, why am I doing this? Because if I set a complex number, just imagine, right? An imaginary number, complex number. If, you, if its fifth power is 1, then z can be defined as what? The fifth roots of unity. Because 1 is unity, right? And we can express it as 2 pi n i over 5. Uh, with the exponential. Now, let's leave it at that. And if you re remember, we said that 2 pi over 5 is basically 72 degrees. So that's awesome. Leave it at that now and just focus on how we can factor z to the fifth minus 1. It can be factored as z minus 1 times z to the fourth plus z to the third plus z to the second plus z plus 1. And of course, we have to set it equal to 0 from here. And notice that if z is equal to 1, this is going to be 0. But at the same time, if z does not equal 1, this will be 0. Well, this kind of gives us an interesting idea about if you take the fifth roots of unity and add them all up, including 1, by the way, there's five of them, it's always going to be 0 because it's all about rotations, right? Think about it in the Argand plane. So if you go ahead and add these numbers, but only the real parts, you're going to get something that looks like this. I'm going to skip some details because I don't want this video to take forever, right? I, you probably wouldn't be willing to watch it. But uh, let's just skip some steps. And this real parts, because if you expand each one of these from here, uh, you're going to get the sum of the real parts being equal to zero. But one thing that's pretty interesting here is that 
This, these are going to come in pairs. For example, cosine of 4 pi over 5 is going to be the opposite of cosine pi over 5 because they're supplementary, first and second quadrants. 6 pi over 5 is just going to be the pi plus pi over 5, right? That's going to be cosine of pi over 5 with a minus sign. And this guy over here is 2 pi plus uh, 2 pi over 5 or 2 pi minus, sorry, 2 pi minus 2 pi over 5. So it's going to be the same thing as cosine 2 pi over 5. And this is just cosine of 2 pi over 5. How interesting. So we get the following. 1 plus, we get cosine 2 pi over 5 twice. So we're going to write it two times. And of course, the same thing is going to happen with cosine of pi over 5 with a minus sign. So we're basically going to get this difference twice. And the whole thing is 0. You get the idea? Now, here's the critical part. This is supposed to be negative 1 half. But it's the opposite of what we're looking for because we're looking for what? Cosine of pi over 5 minus cosine of 2 pi over 5. And it's supposed to be the opposite of 1 half, which is the answer. Make sense? Again, we got the same answer. That should not come as a surprise, right? So cosine 36 degrees minus cosine 72 degrees equals 1 half. Uh-oh, I wrote it for the second time. Great. Let's go ahead and look at the third method kind of quick and then finish up with that. So um, for this one, I'm going to use difference to product formulas. These formulas are hard to remember. So we can talk about how to come up with these formulas in a different video. But for cosine x minus cosine y, we have the following identity. If you're doing trigonometry, you should definitely know these. But if I just plug in 36 and 72, am I getting the answer right away? Not right away, but in a little bit. So x plus y over 2 is going to be the average, 54. And uh, half of their difference is going to be a negative sign. But don't worry, negative sign is a positive sign because sign is, wait, that's not true. Sign is odd, so it's going to spit out the negative. There's another negative sign, yay. Double negatives, unlike English, we can turn it into what? Positive. Okay, great. Now, we have something like this, but let's go ahead and convert this. I can turn sine 54 into cosine of 36 because 54 and 36 are complementary angles but wait a minute why are you doing it because i want to do something amazing and this is actually done uh, most of the time when you get a pattern like this you should always think about this because this is really really cool so i'm going to go ahead and multiply this expression by cosine 18 and divide by cosine 18. is that okay because that's one now the reason why i'm doing it is because this guy with that guy from double angle formula is going to give me sine of 36. Remember sine 2x? Yes. And then cosine 36, of course, is already there. Wait a minute. Am I not getting the uh, double angle again? Yes, but you're missing the 2. No worries. We can multiply by 2. There's always a solution, right? And again, this is the double angle formula, which is sine of 72 divided by 2 cosine 18. Uh-oh. 18 and 72 are complementary angles, so... They're equal. Yay. I end up with one half again. Success. So the answer is cosine of 36 degrees minus cosine of 72 degrees is one half. One more time. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. And sorry about the long video, but I just didn't want to rush through it. So there you go. Bye-bye.